friends. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. Fort Worth Roots is a podcast about our community's creators, and you can find us on all your favorite podcast platforms, Spotify, Pandora, Podbeam, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen, you can find us there. Okay, so Fort Worth Roots has been trucking along for a little over two years now, and I've got to ask you a question. Are you enjoying the show? I hope you are. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to find ways to make the show better for you guys. I've got some awesome plans for the show coming up in the very near future, uh, and I don't want you to miss any of it. So do this for me. Go to your Instagram account, type Fort Worth Roots in the search bar. Do it now so you don't forget. Uh, and then hit the follow button. Coming up over the next few weeks, we've got a powerful lineup of guests that I'm really excited about. Next Monday, we have local Fort Worth influencer, 7th Street promoter, a model, and a winner of the infinity 2020 miss fort worth pageant our buddy sam from the failed podcast was nice enough to co-host this one for us and uh, let us use his really nice studio so you're going to want to check that out week after that chris watson a fort worth musician with a strong r&b and funk vibe joins us he's the front man for retro phonics and also performs as the chris watson band the dude's incredible uh he actually was requested to be on the show like we had a fan of fort worth roots asked to bring him on and i'm really glad we did shout out to paul smith thanks for for that encouragement and setting up that conversation following that we bring on joe tacky owner of cloudland recording studios he's an audio engineer and the bass player for local fort worth band mean motor scooter after that mark spitz an incredible hip-hop artist and previously a radio personality for 97.9 the beat and this gentleman left me uh, a cd that uh i at first kind of had trouble finding anything in my space that played cds but figured it out and i'm glad that i did because the music is incredible it kind of reminds me of uh the beastie boys a little bit uh i hope that's okay to say i always hate comparing other musicians music to somebody else but that's what it brought me back to and i really enjoyed it so i'm looking forward to our episode with mark spitz so i can possibly share some of that music with you at least drop some links so that you can find it yourself after that we've got a return visit from our friend shack mac uh he's it's been a while since we've had him on the show, but it's because he's been busy and he's got some incredible stuff in the works. Uh, I believe it's okay to say he's got an album releasing sometime around October. So um, after his release, we want to have him back on the show and kind of walk us through uh, individually each track and just kind of uh, tell us what goes into this stuff because it's it's more than just getting in front of a microphone and recording like you do for a podcast. I mean, there's a lot that goes into making a successful album like that so that'll be cool uh today is our coverage for the river oak spring fest car show and uh the reason we've talked about this so much it was a lot of planning that went into this we we promoted it for months and months and it just it went off so well and everybody is still so excited for the turnout that we had thank you each and every one of you that came out to that event uh, it was just, it was a great time, and next year it's going to be even bigger. They had over, I want to say they had over 300 something cars that showed up to uh, register and be part of the event. It was great, and uh, the public really turned out and showed their support. So, um, incredible. Our first recording in this little string of uh, recordings is with Chili Cheese Caroline and Little Link Lauren. They are hot doggers for the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile, and they drive all over the country to put smiles on people's faces and pass out these collectible uh, whistles that you can only get whenever you are uh, visiting one of these Wienermobiles. They're the only ones that have these things. You can't get them anywhere else. Lots of fun details on that coming up. Our second recording after our hot doggers is with the president and CEO of the YMCA Fort Worth, Mr. Mike Brown. He's been with the YMCA for 31 years and uh, is going to drop some knowledge on us about that. Tell us a little bit about his story and then uh, also cue you in on the fact they've got a summer camp coming up. I don't know if you can still register for it, but you can go to ymcafw.org to get details on that. That's for kids seven and up. Uh, also, they're hiring, and I cannot think of a better place to spend my work hours uh, than out here at Camp Carter, 450 acres. Uh, they tell you about this in the recording, but they've got uh, horses out there for horseback lessons. they got an archery range. they got a, a rock climbing wall that's, I mean, way bigger than I'd feel comfortable climbing. I mean, it's pro-level stuff. It's got to be zip lines, uh, kayaking. It's, it's great. Uh, so anyway, you'll hear a little bit about that from our, our friend Mike Brown. And then our third and final recording on this is going to be with a gentleman named Manuel with 
Boulevard Brew. He was out there passing out drinks, just kind of promoting Boulevard Brew and uh, just helping us out with the event. Good dude and uh, was willing to uh, do a quick little recording for us. So we did. We were uh, right in front of a police car. One of the River Oaks uh, police cars was directly in front of us and it had a uh, siren hanging off the bumper of this thing that uh, kept getting set off by kids that were, uh, you know, the community outreach thing. They're letting the kids get into the cop car and flip switches and stuff. It was adorable. Not so adorable if you're a podcaster directly in front of the thing, but, you know, that's where I was. So, <laughs> shout out to the River Oaks Police Department. Thank you all for being there and helping us with the, uh, the little convoy we did. We did a classic car convoy uh, the day before uh, to raise a little more awareness about the Saturday event and they blocked off traffic and made sure that we stayed safe and so anyway River Oaks Police Department thank you very much there's a lot of people that uh, deserve a pat on the back and a huge thank you this event would not have worked without all the organizations that got involved and all the volunteers that showed up to help out so thank you too and I hope everybody is willing and ready for the the, the second annual River Oaks Spring Fest car show because this <laughs> you, you don't do an event like this and have that much success and not do a year two uh darren Hauk, congratulations that was great all right well that's enough out of me again this is chili cheese caroline and little link lauren thank y'all for being here let's start the show Uh, names. My name is Chili Cheese Caroline. Chili Cheese Caroline. And I'm Little Link Lauren. Little Link Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you two are the team for the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile out of Dallas? Out of the whole South. So okay. we cover all the way from Georgia over to New Mexico and even up toward Kansas. So oh, wow. we cover a lot of ground during our time in the Wienermobile. Okay. And there are five other Wienermobiles that are on the road. So six total and they're split in different parts of the U.S. Okay. And so y'all cover this region and you're officed out of what city? Madison, Wisconsin. So Madison oh. is headquarters for all six Wienermobiles. And that's actually the only place that you'll ever see all six together lined up at the same time. Which is a pretty special sight to see <laughs> all of them. <laughs> so I didn't go through the history yet and I should have done this shame on me, but when did all this start? Kind of take us through the history of this. So yeah. pretty interesting. The first Wienermobile was in 1936 uh -huh. um, during the Great Depression just as a reason to make people in the Chicago area smile. Uh -huh. And people loved it so much that 86 years later, here we still are with the Wienermobile vehicles. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. So this was specifically just an outreach program to help people because uh, economic strife and where we were at politically, we wanted to uh, create something for people to look forward to and put a smile on their face. Oh yeah, so interesting enough, Oscar Mayer was an actual person and his nephew Carl Mayer was the one who came up with the original idea. Mm -hmm. And so he went up to his uncle Oscar and said, hey, I have a concept to, to bring some light back to our community. And uncle Oscar said, you know what, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And so the Wienermobile began and we've been doing it ever since. That's awesome. So you guys didn't fly out here. You drove from Wisconsin? We did. Yeah, and we drove back in January down to Texas. Okay. But it is a one-year contract, so every June a new class of hot doggers is what we're called is <laughs> hired, and we drive for a full 12 months. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is so cool. Now, what uh, what got y'all teamed up with this? I mean, this is not a normal job, <laughs> sorry to say, but I mean, most people don't know that uh, driving the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile and being part of the weenie team is... Uh, uh, a career option. Mm -hmm. How did y'all fall into that? So every year, Oscar Mayer recruits 12 recent college graduates to drive their six Wienermobiles around the country. And Chili Cheese Caroline and I both found out about it at our university. So I went to the University of Georgia. And I went to the University of Texas at Austin. Okay. And those are two schools that they recruit at each year for new hot doggers. <laughs> and like you said, a lot of people don't even realize that this is something you can do for a year after you graduate. And I think when we told our parents, they were like, man, Man, we wish we had known uh -huh. about this when we were in school. That's awesome. So this is probably something that would suit somebody with a, a marketing major. It's really open to 
all college degrees, oftentimes people who apply for the job do have marketing, public relations, advertising, but really someone with an appetite for adventure who's ready to have buns of fun, as we like to say. <laughs> Y'all's puns are awesome. Uh, we have buns of them. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> yeah, buns of them. Of course you do. <laughs> awesome. So what's y'all's next stop? Where are y'all going from here? How does your journey continue? Our next stop will be Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how far of a drive is that? You know, I actually haven't even <laughs> yeah. checked yet. I guess each Monday we just check it out. We leave at 8 a.m. Yep. and we get there when we get there. And then, funny enough, we're actually in our last month on the yeah. road before we transition to our new team of 12 hot doggers. Mm -hmm. So we're wrapping up the year and hoping to go out with a bang. And what have your journeys over the last uh, 11, 12 months kind of taught you or what what have you discovered on your journey here driving a giant wiener across country i think i mean so many things we've met the most incredible people for me one of my favorite parts is that we really get to spread smiles wherever we go oh. and people are really happy to see the wiener mobile we get to hear about their life stories of perhaps when their grandparents took them to see the wiener mobile and now <laughs> they're bringing their grandchildren so it's just been amazing the stories we've heard and the happiness we've been able to spread. That's yeah. awesome. And personally for both of us, we're very type A plan oriented people. And it's been nice to do this job for a year and actually take the time to live in the present instead of mm -hmm. constantly planning for what's next. Yeah. So that's like this last month, we're really soaking it all in. Instead of worrying about what comes after, we're gonna enjoy the season of our life and then worry about what comes next when the time is. That's ready. awesome. That is awesome. Also something we brought for you. Uh -oh. We have a wiener whistle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wiener whistles you can only get from a wiener mobile. So that's kind of a special I'm gonna open this right now get. because I mean we're recording and people need to I'll, uh, I'll take a picture of this later so people can see it. But we gotta hear what it sounds like. I right? wanted to make sure we got you yes. one of those before we left today. I can only get this from someone like yourself in your position, your prestige title. <laughs> from okay. a hot dogger. Shh. You gotta give it some oomph. Can I give it, let me turn her away from the wind. Shh. There, there it is. There I, I wouldn't hold my mouth right. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay, I'm a pro. And the whistle awesome. has been around since 1952, so mm. this year is its 70th birthday. I will cherish this as long <laughs> as I live. Thank you so much. Of course. I have one last question for you because I'm I'm trying to understand the logistics of this. Do y'all do y'all office somewhere on your journey? Do y'all stay at a hotel and park that in a hotel parking lot? Exactly yeah. that, yep. So okay. each week, um, typically on Mondays, we drive into a new city. Uh -huh. That city becomes our home base for the week. And yeah. like you said, we stay in hotels. So That's very cool. Put it in okay. the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can, I can cross that off my list of questions. That was, <laughs> yes. that was the final one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank y'all so much. I, I understand that you didn't have to do this. So I, I truly oh, am appreciative it. of y'all coming over and giving me a moment of your time. It was yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to catch up with you today. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. Okay. All right. Truly, once again, thank you for being on Fort Worth Roots. And uh, if you'll give me some kind of contact information, I'll send you a link whenever this episode's up for the River Oak Spring Fest car show. Great. Awesome. Okay. We can't wait. All right, ladies. Thank you so much. Thanks. So, Mike, have you heard about Fort Worth Roots? I have not. Okay. Well, we are a local podcast, and we focus on the people that are creating something inside our community and making a great, making it a great place. And so you would definitely fall into that. Uh, you are building YMCA centers or organizing the activities that go on across the entire state of Texas or this region. What, how did uh, you put so it? So we have a seven-county region. So okay. So basically, we're the YMCA of Metropolitan Fort Worth. Okay. Uh, but we have Wise and Hood County. Uh, Johnson. Um, we have about 15 locations uh, of actual YMCA's plus this beautiful camp. Okay. Uh, and then we're in about 40 different programs through relationships in the school districts and churches and different community centers throughout. You're a busy man, Mike. We are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when did you take over this role? So I started in January 21. Okay. Yeah, so I've been in the Y 31 years. Um, I have uh, been involved in WISE all across the country. Um, my wife passed away about two years ago, and the kids and I wanted to relocate uh, and kind of land somewhere. Yeah. And uh, Fort Worth was uh, an open opportunity, and I went through the process and now got you're hired. here. <laughs> yeah. So you're in the Fort Worth area. Yep. And uh, are you loving it? I'd love it. Yeah. yeah. I actually really, you know, I, I was in Houston at one time, I was in Georgia. 
um, wanted to come back to Texas. Yeah. yeah. And where are you from originally? California. California. I don't tell very many people that here. I won't tell anybody <laughs> either. Well, no, we won't hold it against you. I, you know, whenever the uh, the mass migration of Californians started showing up here at Texas uh, right. doorstep, yeah. you know, you get all that uh, ridiculous pushback like, oh, they better not bring their crap to Texas. That's but right, yeah. Honestly, yeah. you know, the reason that people are moving here is because they want a different uh, community they're yeah, they're yeah. fed up with where they were and they're coming for something better yeah I, li- so. I like the quality of life I like the uh, diversity I like the small town big city feel mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, definitely the right choice for me and my kids that's awesome yeah. man well I'm so sorry for your loss but I'm glad to hear that you've made Fort Worth your home and I, I know that this is a great place just from experience so oh, I yeah. know that y'all are gonna be happy here yeah um, and I'm, uh, I'm glad that they've got somebody uh, competent at the wheels of this <laughs> amazing Camp Carter. Sure, yeah. We've been talking about this nonstop for a month and a half. Uh, and what a turnout, man. Did, did you think crazy. it was going to be this No, big? I did not expect this many people. And I, I asked people, <laughs> did you know this was here? When I got here, I, I told folks, like, 400 and... 450 acres in it's, the city of Fort it's Worth. It's 450? Yeah. I Somebody mean, we, had told me 320, 360, yeah, well, something. Yeah, well, we, we have an equestrian center, You're trails, right. a nature center that was donated to us with all kinds of land and amenities. Uh-huh. So camp is just, you know, going to continue to grow. Yeah. You know, we have about 250 kids a week. Uh, here in resident camp in the summer we have weddings we have retreats we have the ropes course outdoor education events like this today yeah so it's just a it's a secret and we got to let more people know about it (laughs) yeah yeah and uh you know the the same thing that makes it incredible and special and unique is the same thing that's going to keep people from knowing that it's here it's it's kind of tucked off behind everything right. yeah but it's it's crazy here we are in the middle of this uh metropolitan area and we're surrounded by trees if you weren't here or if you didn't know where you were if you were to take somebody blindfold them and bring them here they would have thought you put them in some rural community right. 200 yeah. miles away right yeah uh, but it's it's right here in the middle of everything so what an awesome location and uh this this uh, Camp Carter has some extremely uh, it's got some historical roots that go really far back. Do you it know does. much of the history here? So I don't know all of it. Okay, uh, Tell us I, the know th- I know that <laughs> Ammon Carter donated uh, the land. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a, a dream to start a camp um, and the why has just progressed over time. There's been a lot of alumni and folks that are involved in what we do. Yeah. Um, certainly the area around the land changed. Um, but the city's been extremely supportive and, and in partnership with what the Y is doing, the school districts and, you know, Fort Worth ISD uses this as their outdoor education center uh, for a lot of their students. Uh, we just hired actually a new uh, executive director for camp who lives on site. Is that Larry? Uh, no, Larry's our uh, properties guy. Okay. Yeah. I've met uh, Larry. Yeah, Ricky. Nice guy. Ricky is our uh, new executive. Okay, I think I did meet, meet yeah. Ricky. He's got a bit of an accent. He's got an accent. Okay, yeah. I did meet Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's from out of the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but th- there's lots of plans here now, and, and we're in the process of master planning, and he wants to put in wakeboarding, and, and we want to do some new amenities and upgrades, and then we also want to open it up to the public, which it hasn't been. Yeah. Uh, it's always been real camp-centric. Right, right. But you can see today that people like having places to go. and It's just a beautiful space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I just... Folks don't know that it exists, so we're we're going to be working on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I found out the hard way, and this is actually how I met Larry. Uh, that it's not open to the public. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you got the, or if this even became a story, but <laughs> there was a weirdo on a motorcycle that just came in here one day and started poking around, and I made it all the way to the back, and uh, Larry was coming up a trail right as I had gotten to the end of it, and I'm like, oh crap! I'm in his. <laughs> I tried to get out of his way, and he's like, what's up? How are you? What yeah. can I do for you? Right. Yeah. And that's how we met but uh he's like yep it's uh you know not open to the public i'm like "Uh oh (laughs) yeah so so that's gonna change yeah uh it hasn't been and i think that's why people don't know about it Mm -hmm. and so you know a place to come ride bikes or go fishing canoeing horseback riding or just walk the trails and the community just needs to know that 20 minutes away from where they live right here in the middle of the city yep we have this this asset you it's know. in such a wonderful location yeah. i did see a couple of horses running around here did somebody bring those or are those two of your horses that yeah, y'all so keep here yeah we have about 15 horses oh, wow. and then we'll have more in the summer we have a full equestrian center yeah uh so we teach uh 
uh, horseback riding, okay. trail riding, and then in the summer the kids, you know, go to horse camp and mm-hmm. yeah. That yeah. is so cool, man. What else can we tell the listeners about Camp Carter? Well, uh, I would say that summer registration's going on, and if you want a place for your kids and uh, what to, age to groups? hang out, uh, seven and up. So seven to teens. We're also hiring uh, counselors to work in the summer Okay. Uh, to work with kids. Um, kids have a blast, and camp is one of those getaways, and you don't have to worry about your kid going two and a half hours away to some camp. Right. You can uh, do it right here. You can do it right here in Fort Worth, and, and it gives takes away the cell phone and the technology and allows kids to be outdoors and i'll tell you i came last summer and the kids have a blast yeah i mean the things they do all day long Mm -hmm. uh it gets a little crazy i saw archery over here we have archery we have riflery horseback riding fishing hiking yeah uh, all all kinds of of family events and you know there you do need to hire some people yeah (laughs) we we, we hire a lot of people in the summer and where where can our uh, listeners go to check uh out your information if they're looking for employment if they want to be a counselor if they're trying to get their kids signed up for camp where can they go for that yeah it's real easy ymcafw.org fw.org yep okay and i'll make sure that that's in the show notes i'd love to have you on anytime fort worth yeah would love to support you because you do whenever you show up here my reaction whenever i was taking my illegal bike ride around your community um i'm just (laughs) like man what can i do to to help or make sure that this doesn't disappear because yeah i think I don't know if this is an age thing, but you see something like that and you want to protect it. Right. You yeah. know? So yeah. I, I I hope that everybody here today shows yeah. up and goes, what can we do to make sure this doesn't go away? Right. Yeah. And, and, and we need to protect it because yeah. there are certainly people out there that would love to oh, yeah. you know, take this away this is from prime us. prime real estate, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Put up another thousand apartment complexes right right. we don't want that to happen yeah (laughs) yeah and and i'd love to be on the show again just to talk about the why just let me Uh, know you know we serve hundreds of thousands of people and why is all over the community and we're building more and putting more programs out there so i'd love to share where the why is going in the future absolutely thank you well mike thank you i know you're a busy man so i'll wrap this up but uh yeah let us know and i'll make sure that the contact information is available for our listeners in the show notes sure thank you all right thanks man yeah appreciate it all right, it's a little windy out here, but I think we're going to be all right. Tell me your name for the podcast. Uh, yes, sir. My name is Manuel Urbina. Manuel, thank you for being on the Fort Worth Roots podcast, man. Wonderful. It's a pleasure. And today you're out here sporting uh, Boulevard Brew. Yes, sir. Do me a favor. Put that mic just a little closer to your mouth. Yeah, turn turn it up. There, right there. It'd be perfect, yeah. Awesome. All right, so y'all are out here giving away uh, complimentary tea, and people can either add sweetener to it or not, and uh, passing out coupons to tell people about Purple Lounge, right? Yes, sir. Right on. You can tell I've been there, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I, oh, yes. What an experience, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it because it's uh, you, you don't expect to walk into something like that. They're on that main drag, that River Oaks, what is that, River Oaks Boulevard? Yes, sir. Right. And uh, in that, that shop, you know, there's a Mexican food place, there's the coffee shop, and I don't know what, what's further down, but um, when you walk into that, you're definitely not expecting everything that's been packed into that little shop. I mean, y'all haven't wasted one square inch of that place. We try not to. <laughs> yeah. And so now y'all are set up to serve uh, coffee, coffee drinks, teas, and then y'all have food now, and there's yes. a dining area and a stage for musicians, and now a bar to serve uh, draft beers. Are the drafts going yet? Oh, yes. Awesome. We, we, have, a, we have a a pretty large selection. We have our Deep Adams IPA, Texas Lawnmower, Texas uh, Blonde. Then we have our Billy Jenkins Buck. And then on can we have True Love. We have Friday IPA. And then the Buck Slider. Yeah. Friday IPA and Deep Elm IPA. Those are the ones that I'd be hitting hard. But the uh, the other ones I would definitely give a try. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just behind that, you've got the that's the Purple Lounge, right? Yes, sir. Right behind that. And that's just a chill little spot. You've got some extra seating back there. It's real low key. Oh, yeah. Nice little spot to enjoy conversations with the friends and just hang out. Yes, sir. That's it's cool, also a, a business setting, too. We have college students that come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If they're remote, they study, quiet. Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday is when, of course, the nightlife comes in. Yeah. So, yes. I, uh, let's see. I think it was this last week. I think it was Monday. Uh, I got let loose from work early. So I ended up going by Boulevard Brew. And I sat down in the, the Purple Lounge. I had my coffee. And I sat there. And I just... I. Uh, 
messed around on social media, made posts, checked emails, had the whole place to myself, really, because it was Monday at like 11 o'clock, so I had the whole Purple Lounge to myself. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pretty chill spot. <laughs> um, so what, what got you connected with Boulevard Brew? Well, actually, it's an interesting story. Okay. That's I was what we're all about. Yes, sir. I was on my way to college at about 6 in the morning, saw a coffee shop, sparked my interest, went in. I was like, oh, my God. And what's funny, my dream was to open a, a coffee shop in River Oaks, and I saw this establishment, like, yes, there's something here. Yeah. So I invested some time, got to know the owner, produced some ideas, great minds think alike, mm -hmm. and produce the plan we have now in River Oaks and hopefully bring more to the boulevard and the great city of River Oaks. Yeah. Well, uh, just from what I've seen talking to Darren Houck, he's the mayor pro tem of River Oaks, uh, interacting with the community around River Oaks, seeing what Tristan Morris did with the mural on the side of Boulevard Brew. What a beautiful piece. Oh, my God. Is, is she finished finished yet? I think she might still have a few touches to put on it. Maybe a few, but yeah. I believe it's almost 100%. Man, it looks great. And she's got some great media coverage from the local news channels, which, of course, is good for Boulevard Brew. Yes. I mean, But anyway, there's just a lot going on in River Oaks. And uh, the Purple Lounge and Bo Boulevard Brew is a great example of the growth that's happening in your community. Yes, sir. I love it. Yes, a lot of great minds behind the scenes. For one, well, for two, Christopher Franks and Tracy. Mm -hmm. My goodness, great team. Now, Christopher's the owner? Yes. Okay. And Tracy, is, she's the VP. Okay. Yes, and then can't forget about Trista with all the connections she has that brings that she brings to Boulevard Brew. Mm -hmm. It's amazing from yeah. the artist on canvas and vocals. Yeah. And you've got a, you've got a lineup of musicians. Uh, they're scheduled for Boulevard Brew, right? Coming soon, yes. Yeah. Uh, you've already had some live music out there. Yes, we have. Did y'all have a comedian out there as well? Maybe in the future, but that would be okay. nice. Yes. I imagine that, yeah. Yes. All right, yeah. Well, it's an awesome place, really solid vibe, and uh, I know big things are in store for you you guys out there at Boulevard Brew. Yes. Anything oh. you would tell our listeners? We're out here at the uh, Camp Carter of uh, River Oaks Spring Fest Car Show, first annual event. The turnout has been incredible. Uh, I was talking to Darren uh, about the turnout, or excuse me, I was talking to Mark Nobles, and he was the one that was, you know, instrumental in getting people in the gate and signing people up and all that. And they were expecting 100 to 120 cars. Do you know how many people actually showed up with their classic cars? It looked about 350 or 4. 320 oh, wow. is, is what it was at last time he checked. But you might be right. There might be 400 cars out there. Beautiful. It's a lot. It's a yes. lot. And the community really came together. We've had so many people out here. This has just been an excellent event. Yes. Yeah. I hope more to come. Well, and uh, next year we'll, we'll be even more prepared. And uh, it's, it's going to be even bigger. Yes. So, And by then, Boulevard Brew will be a, a family uh, staple. <laughs> Everybody's going to know that name, and so you, you guys are, are going to be rocking and rolling, and so everything will be bigger next year. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, are you from Fort Worth? Yes, I am. I grew up in the Fairmont. Okay. If you're familiar with yeah, the South the Side area, District. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I grew up on 6th Avenue mm -hmm. on the other side of Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Street, so had the privilege to live there. I um, ventured off into Polly, McCart, Alta Mesa, Wedgwood, so I all over Fort Worth, right? And been to Houston, lived in Houston for a while. West Texas, East Texas, so pretty familiar with the state of Texas. Yeah. So Fort Worth roots would make a good tattoo on your arm. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Oh wow! <laughs> all right, brother. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to, the, to eventually uh, bending Chris's ear and getting him on the show too to talk a little more about Boulevard Brew. But love what you guys are doing. Love the vibe there. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Thank you so much. You're welcome. A huge, sincere, very big, massive thank you to all the volunteers and organizations that got involved with the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show. I know that there's got to be a better way for me to cover these events. Uh, I just need to come up with a better plan for this. You know, we had all those people and all those awesome activities going on and I have three recordings here now these I'm so glad that we got these three people on here and by far I think definitely the most important people there right sure but there's probably a better way for me to do this if you have any tidbits or guidance information suggestions whatever hit me up media at fortworthroots.com um, I don't think we failed anybody with this one but I would like to do it better each and every time so if you've got some input please let me know 
Chili Cheese Caroline and Little Link Lauren were up first with the uh, Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Really incredible. If you ever have a chance to catch them out and about, do it. Get yourself a little weenie whistle. Uh, Mr. Mike Brown, President and CEO, YMCA Fort Worth. Uh, dude just recently moved or relocated here to Fort Worth, and I hope he's loving it. Uh, looking forward to reaching out to Mike and, and getting a little more info, see what they got going on. You know, there's some big changes coming up out there at YMCA Fort Worth, and uh, we we want to be able to tell people about it. So opening it up to the public is going to be a big move. I'm sure there's a lot of red tape to cut through and figuring out exactly how that would work. But whenever they do do this, it's going to be incredible. And um, I'm looking forward to that. So again, they do have a summer camp coming up or it's already in the mix. I don't know. Check that out. YMCAFortworth.org's Kids 7 and Up. And uh, I promise you, any kid would love to hang out here for a day, a week, whatever. It's paradise. 450 acres out there. Uh, Manuel, thank you for being on the show. Our homie over there at Boulevard Brew. And I did stop by there for uh, Trista Morris's mural finishing party. Got to drop by and check it out. And this place is fully operational. And uh, I think that it is what they intend for it to be for the foreseeable future. Meaning they're finished with all the remodeling and whatnot. Um, I did have, and I cannot remember exactly what I grabbed... I got something off the menu. I got to talk to the chef. He was uh, cooking in his, his tiny, very efficient uh, kitchen. Uh, I don't think that you'd be cooking for a thousand people out of this thing, but I didn't have to wait long. He had my food ready in probably five minutes, and it came out incredible. Um, driving by this place, uh, going through River Oaks, if you went by it, it, it's very unassuming. It's a small space, but whenever you go inside, you're like, Wow, they didn't they didn't uh, misuse one square inch of this place. It's incredible, and the food that they're uh, serving up is amazing. And uh, then they've got a little bar there, and four or five, maybe six things on tap, and then bottled beers and things like that. But and they're also bringing out really good musicians and um, creators, artists uh, to to play there at the venue. Uh, and then it's a really cool chill space. I stopped by there I think before they were completely finished, and I'm just hanging out in the back. We've got this little lounge area. Um, I believe they have Wi-Fi there. I don't think I was using it, but you can sit back there and just kind of hang out and get work done. It's just a quiet space to enjoy a cup of coffee and do some thinking. So anyway, check that out. That's Boulevard Brew. It's right there in the the heart of River Oaks on that main drag, Um, right almost directly next to uh, our new burger place and they probably do not want me promoting their burger place grumps burgers uh just opened up uh i think it was the week after this event but anyway they have just been getting slammed like it's been i think 30 minute wait to get a hamburger and it's not because they're doing anything wrong it's because there's so many people there's a line out the door and uh apparently uh talking to darren who lives right down the street from them he says it hasn't let up from the day they opened that place uh, up until now. They're, they're just not getting a break. So they've had to do a few things like I think they're closed on Monday. Do not quote me on this. Look it up yourself. But one day out of the week, they are, they're closed just so that they can recover because they are just uh, slammed from open to close. Uh, whenever the doors open at the beginning of the day, they're, they're getting rushed and uh, it doesn't let up until they lock the door and kick people out. So and it's the food is that good. It really is. And uh, not only that, but it's so reasonably priced. Uh, you cannot get a burger that quality for that price anywhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stand by that. I, I don't know where you would get a burger that good for that little. You can get I think, and again, don't quote me on this, but a burger, fries, and a drink for like 11 bucks. That's pretty badass. And uh, it's its not just any burger. It's a Grumps burger. Um, anyway, so I'll quit talking about that, but go check that out if you get a chance right next to, or right down the street from Boulevard Brew. What else? What episode is this? This is episode 85. It's also irrelevant. It doesn't matter. As long as you're enjoying the show and we keep pumping these out every Monday, uh, that's what it's all about. Making good friends, entertaining the community, connecting you with our artists. Um, Yeah, and just making friends along the way. 
That's all there is to it. So it doesn't matter what episode we're on, but it does happen to be 85. And uh, as we get closer to episode 100, there's a lot of stuff that I'm working on in the background, trying to scheme some plans. And I don't want to tell you anymore. I don't want to tell you what the plans are until they are ready to go. That upcoming lineup again is with Genevieve, our uh, friend that we met out at the uh, Whiskey Garden bikini party thing. Compliments of our buddy Royal, who brought us out. Um, the week after that, we got Chris Watson, really incredible musician that's gigging all over town. Uh, you're going to want to check this dude out and his band, and his band the Retrophonics. Uh, our homie Joe Tacky over there at Cloudland Recording Studio. Uh, just a cool dude, and i got to get out to see Mean Motor Scooter. He's the bass player. He's the bass player for that band. Um, and then we got Mark Spitz. This dude's awesome. And uh, I had a legend sitting in front of me, and I didn't even know it uh, until I, we got done with the recording. I actually had a chance to. Now that I've met him and I know where to find his stuff uh, quicker, I, I did more investigating and found just mountains of material stuff that he's created over the years and uh he gave me an album that uh a, a cd and i was trying to figure well why does my laptop doesn't have a cd player anyway i figured it out hooked it up bluetooth and listened to uh uh the the, the album on on my big speaker and uh it's incredible it reminds me of like like beastie boys kind of a little bit only maybe even a little better i'm gonna say better because it's uh locally produced here by somebody that has actually been on the fort worth roots podcast and uh, looking forward to see what he's getting into. 2020, just like so many other people, kind of threw a wrench in the gears for Mark Spitz. And he is now in the process of kind of winding everything back up and getting back after uh, creating and uh, getting involved again with the hip-hop community here in Fort Worth. And uh, that was a really fun episode. G- guys, just really easy to talk to. And then Shaq Mac, our buddy from, uh, I can't remember what episode. Let me see. Dear God, Shaq Mac was episode 44, so way back in the day. <laughs> that was back in October. Well, since then, Shaq Mac has been very, very busy collaborating with uh, other hip-hop artists, uh, big-name people, and uh, creating what he's calling his final album uh, set to release in October. And I asked Shaq, I'm like, dude, are you, so what's the deal? Are you done? Are you no longer, this is it for you? What's what's going on? He's like, nope. Um, I'm just, I've got it in my head that this is my final album because I'm going to leave it all on the table. He's putting everything he's got, financially, spiritually, physically, behind this album. And um, that's just where his focus is at right now. He let me listen to two tracks, and they are incredible. And whenever he got done playing them, I'm like, wow, where'd you have that? Uh, where, where did they finish that? Where did they do the thing where they take the track and then turn it into a final product? You know, what studio were you working with? And he's like, um, this this actually hasn't been mastered yet. You're listening to the raw audio. And that blew me away because it, it was already really good. Shaq Mac's music is not your typical local hip-hop artist uh he, he's, he's got his mind and his heart in the right place, and he's putting out some really incredible art. Um, so I'm excited to see where this takes us, how his album turns out, and the response that he gets from it. I'm just really excited that we got hooked up with Shaq, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what he's got going on in the future. He does have a YouTube channel, but he does not mess with uh, social media. And that is so wild to most creators to hear that there's somebody out there trying to make an impact, but does not do anything on social media. In fact, for a little while, I thought Shat Mac had just hung it up and was not going to do anything anymore because I could not find him on social media. He did that intentionally because it was more of a distraction for him, and it wasn't in line with you know, where he was be, trying to be as an artist or as a creator, so he just got rid of it. And he said since then, his uh, analytics have actually gone up from all the people that are uh, gravitating towards his art. He's, he's actually getting more attention and uh, is, is just not playing the social media game anymore, which is so encouraging to me because myself included, I like talking to people. I like being part of the community. So in that aspect, I like social media, but it is such a pain in the ass. You just want to work on your art and social media has kind of been um, something that we've all ingrained in our process. Like this is how you talk to people. This is how you get people's attention. 
And I would love it if it wasn't like that. And that's why we started going to these events because I want to interact with people directly. And I'm tired of social media. I think everybody is. So we'll put Shaq Mac up there up front as the uh, guy leading the battle charge. He has completely taken himself off the social media radar. So good for you, dude. And uh, really excited to see how your uh, upcoming album turns out. And I know it's going to be great because you gave me a sneak peek of the unfinished product, and it's already incredible. All right, guys and gals, thank you all for being here. If you would, please, you, you listened all the way to the end of this episode. It's obvious that you enjoy listening to Fort Worth Roots Podcast. Do me a favor. Go to our social medias and hit that follow button. You know, it's Fort Worth Roots on everything and uh, our YouTube channel. I'm just about done catching that thing up to current. Um, it does take an exuberant amount of time to get those episodes out. And uh, my my uh, line in the sand is that I will always have one of these episodes out to you each and every Monday. So that means that other things sometimes get put on the back burner. And uh, YouTube channel it lately has been one of those things, but I am rearranging my time timetable, my schedule, to make sure that um, it's not just the podcast that gets my immediate attention, but also the YouTube channel, because we have picked up quite a few subscribers, um, and people, not, not just subscribers, but people are going to YouTube now, and they're starting to listen to the podcast through the video, so... Uh, I need to make sure that I'm stepping up my game there on YouTube. That's it. I'll see you next Monday. Thank y'all for being here. Bye-bye.